Module 3, The Flag Maker, by Susan Campbell Bartoletti, illustrated by Claire A. Novola. It was 1812, and the United States was at war with Britain. A country at war needed plenty of flags. In Baltimore, a 12-year-old girl named Caroline Pickerskill and her mother, Mary, made flags. Caroline and her mother sewed flags so that militia and cavalry officers could direct their men during battles on land. They sewed flags so that Navy ships could communicate with each other during battles at sea. They sewed flags for the privateers that attacked British ships. But no matter how many flags they made, and no matter how many battles the Americans fought, the Americans could not defeat the British. One summer day, Caroline and her mother welcomed three military officers to their flag shop. The men ordered an American flag for Fort McHenry, the fort guarding the waters near Baltimore. The flag must be so large, the British will have no trouble seeing it from a distance, said one officer. Excited, Caroline and her mother set to work right away. Out of wool bunting, they cut pieces for broad red and white stripes. They cut a large field of dark blue. They cut white cotton stars. Day after day, they sewed stitch after stitch, red stripe after white stripe, star after star. Caroline's grandmother and cousins helped. So did her mother's slave, her house servant too. Night after night, they worked by candlelight, long past bedtime. The wool bunting itched, the needle pricked. Caroline's fingers ached and her eyes felt gritty and sore. But inch by inch, they sewed until the flag spilled over their laps and lay in folds on the floor. Soon the flag outgrew the sewing room. They carried it to a large malt house. They spread out the flag on the malt house floor and they sewed still more. Finally, after six long weeks, the last star was sewn into place. The last threads were snipped and knotted. From hoist to fly, it was the largest flag Caroline had ever seen. The flag was delivered to Fort McHenry, where soldiers raised it high above the ramparts. Each day, Caroline looked for her flag as it waved over the fort. It looked tiny in the distance, but she felt proud. Over the next year, the flag shop grew even busier. Caroline and her mother sewed more flags. The Americans fought more battles, yet they could not defeat the British once and for all. And so a difficult year passed. Early one August morning, a horse clattered down the Baltimore streets. British sails, its rider shouted, in the Chesapeake Bay. Caroline knew British ships meant one thing, invasion. All over Baltimore, church bells clanged, calling militiamen to arms. Men and boys shouldered long muskets and lined up on the parade grounds. A snare drum rolled, a bugle flared, a commander shouted, forward march. The militiamen tramped off to rout the British. All that day, Caroline tried to go about her work. She sewed, she swept, she looked for her flag and waited for news. She swept and sewed and waited still more. The next day, Caroline heard a low rumble like a distant thunderstorm, cannon. She whispered a prayer for the men. Later, terrible news was again shouted in the streets. The Americans had fought a battle and lost. Now British troops were headed to destroy Washington. That night, men, women, and children spilled out onto rooftops. They watched the sky over Baltimore. It glowed an eerie orange. The British were burning the capital. Caroline looked out across the dark harbor toward Fort McHenry. She couldn't see the flag, but she trusted it was there. Baltimore prepared to defend itself. Around the city, men dug trenches and built earthworks. Shovels scraped and clinked. Dirt flew. Women and children carried biscuits and sweet tea to the volunteers. In the channel near Fort McHenry, men sunk small ships and barges to block the harbor. Women and children tore soft cloths into bandages. Men moved gunboats into position, ready to fire on British ships. 
Once more, Baltimore waited. A day, a week, two weeks, the city held its breath and went to church and went to work and waited for the British to strike. Early one September morning, a loud roar rocked the flag shop. Carolyn rushed to the window. British ships were bombing Fort McHenry. Fort McHenry's guns blazed back. Hour after hour, bombs burst louder than thunder. Hour after hour, rockets screamed and flashed brighter than lightning. The shop trembled and shook. The streets turned thick with smoke. The smell of burnt powder filled the air. The British ships crept closer and closer. Evening came. The sky darkened with storm. Rain fell. Soon, thunder and lightning joined the cannon and rockets. Ships and fort and sky boomed and flashed together. Each time the sky lit up, Carolyn saw that her flag was still there. At midnight, the bombing stopped. One minute, ten minutes, an hour, and all was still. Caroline longed for morning light. Now she could only sit and hold on to courage. She tried not to sleep, but she did. At dawn, Caroline awoke. The rain had stopped. Everywhere, sky and water and land looked gray. She couldn't see the fort. A breeze passed through the window. Slowly, the sky cleared. There, hoisted high above the ramparts, Caroline saw a tired flag hanging from its staff in the damp morning air. A wool bunting flag sewn full of broad stripes and bright stars with needles that pricked and fingers that ached. A flag sewn full of pride and courage and hope.